sculpture traditionally, going back to the Greeks and then the Romans, um, up through the Middle Ages to the Renaissance, uh, even into the neoclassical period, it was, it was often done for uh, a social or political purpose. It was to uh, represent an emperor or to build an Arc de Triomphe that represented the winning of a battle. It was uh, in, a, in, in times in our history when most people were not literate, it was a way of, of explaining story to them. So it, uh, it had a, a, a purpose to it beyond what it just looked like. Um, it was often for revealing status. It was, um, at the other end, it was for creating uh, objects of art as decoration for homes. Um, traditional sculpture by that nature then was mostly figurative. Uh, the artists studied in school anatomy, sculpting in clay, carving in stone, uh, and uh, for the clay pieces, having them cast it at bronze foundries. Most of the work is representational, meaning that, that when you look at it, you uh, know what it is. Uh, it represents a specific image. And um, a lot of figurative traditional art in terms of the contemporary markets fell out of favor in the, in the 60s um, with the advent of conceptual art and a lot of real innovative art forms. There are still a lot of schools that, or a few schools, that teach the traditional arts of of uh, sculpting. Um, a lot of the work we do as commissioned sculptors, almost as commercial sculptors, is more traditional. We get a lot of portrait work or work where we're asked to do something uh, or, or to design a piece for a site. And for, for most people who don't have uh, a lot of art education or experience, the traditional work is more accessible to them. Uh, that it's uh, representational work that they can identify with.